Hello, now, we're on to English now. We've done maths, okay? I hope you enjoyed them. We're on to English. We're learning about English. This is the start of a series of videos which is going to help you with your basic English, okay? Things you may not have known or things you knew a little bit about. Well, I'm going to help you along, okay, and try and get you up to a better standard. Now, we're going to kick off the English lessons, and there'll be lots of them. We'll be teaching all sorts of things, from your spelling to how to construct sentences, etc., etc., etc. I've decided to kick off English with two videos about verbs, okay? We're going to get you to a high standard here as far as understanding verbs is concerned. Now, what is a verb? And basically, that's what it is, okay? Or it may be a word that affirms, commands, or asks a question, okay? There are so many different types of verbs, okay? But yeah, basically that's what it is. A verb is a part of speech that expresses an action, okay? A process, a state or condition or mode of being, okay? Now, a verb is describing the subject in a sentence. A verb can be more than one word. then we're talking about a verbal phrase. Now they come up quite often in English, verbal phrases. Now, if I was to simply just list all the verbs and just leave it at that, okay, that wouldn't be any help to you at all. No help whatsoever. Because verbs make up about a quarter of the English language, okay? And that is why they are all categorised. There are different types of verbs. Think about going into the subject of verbs as opening up a box of chocolates. And not opening up a can of worms. It will all become clear. So what we're going to be doing, okay, in this video and in the next video, two parts, we are going to be categorizing these verbs and explaining exactly what they mean, okay? And we're going to be starting off with modal verbs. Now, this is the dictionary definition of modal. Mode or form. Expressing mood. Asserting with qualification. Expressing mood. Okay, expressing mood. The modal verbs are can, will, may. You can see them all there. Could, should, shall, would, must, might. These are your modal verbs. Okay, that's all of them. That is the complete lot. That's your lot. That's all your modal verbs. And that is what a modal verb does, basically. A modal verb is quite different to an infinitive verb. Because, well, how can you tell the difference? How can you tell the difference between a modal verb and an infinitive verb? Well, 
infinitive, and we'll give you another dictionary definition here, the form of a verb without reference to person, number, or ten, tense. Okay? Infinitive. An infinitive verb. With all infinitive verbs, you can put the word to in front of them. You can't with modal verbs. Remember? Remember the modal verbs? Think about it. You can't do it, can you? You can't say to can, to will, to may, to could, to should, to shall, to would, to must, to might. However, you can with infinitive verbs. Now let's list some of these for you as well. To jump, to run, to be, to see, to dance, to eat, to laugh, to sing, to walk. To impress, the list is endless, okay? It goes on and on and on and on and on. These verbs are infinitive. If you can put the word to in front of the verb, then it is an infinitive verb. Now there will be a test later on in the video just to see if you're understanding what I'm talking about here basically. Now, <laughs> so we've covered modal verbs and we've covered infinitive verbs. What about verbal phrases? A verbal phrase in a sentence cannot be any longer than five words. Okay? And we'll give you an example of a verbal phrase right now. You see what I mean? I mean, a lot of people would actually think that that there with that verbal phrase, in fact, there's only one verb there. A state of being. Hmm. Well, that's scaldy, isn't it? That's a state of being. But these other words in that uh, phrase are also verbs. Auxiliary verbs. Not many people list auxiliary verbs for you. But I am going to do it. Why not? Before I do, of course, we're going to give you a definition of auxiliary. What does the word auxiliary mean? Auxiliary, referring to my notes, definition from the dictionary here. Providing help, okay? Providing help. Subsidiary. Supplementary. A helper. Helps form tenses, moods, voices, etc. It is a helping verb. That is what an auxiliary verb is. Right, well, let's see some examples of these auxiliary verbs. Let's put you on a black screen. An auxiliary verb can be used in past and present tense, as you saw from these examples there. Okay, so you could say can, can't, could, couldn't. Okay? Now that is what they are, basically. They are auxiliary verbs. So we've now covered three types of verbs. Okay, we've covered modal. Now modal 
there's a small list of verbs. You could probably memorize them with a little bit of uh, studying there. We've covered infinite. Infinitive, I beg your pardon. We've covered infinitive verbs. And we worked out that unless you can put the word to in front of the verb, it cannot be infinitive. And we covered auxiliary verbs. You can see what I mean. They do make up a big chunk of our English language. Okay, so what's next? Auxiliary verbs make up verbal phrases. Quite often you think about verbs as only being one word in a sentence. In actual fact, they can be made up of a whole variety of words in a verbal phrase, and auxiliary verbs help us do that. Keep walking. Keep being the auxiliary verb, walking being the main verb. I am talking. Talking being the main verb, am being the auxiliary verb. I must run. Must, auxiliary, main verb, run. Must run, making up the verbal phrase there. We shall eat. Shall, auxiliary verb, eat the main verb. Shall eat is a verbal phrase, making up the verbal phrase. Shall eat. We shouldn't go to town. Shouldn't, being auxiliary, go being the main verb. I will keep you informed. Will keep being the ones there. I hope that's of some help. The clue is in the title, really, when we're talking about action verbs. Action, okay? Action. Actions speak louder than words. Well, they don't, because this is all about words. It's English. He is running. She is running. He is dancing. She is singing. He is eating. He is fishing. He is walking. He is talking. He is moving. He is flying. He is reading. He is watching. Now, action verbs can be used in the past and present tense. So, he watched. She sung. He danced. He ate. He made. These are all action verbs. Let's give you another list. Why not?
gardens for the ball and dancing. proceedings. Having a whale of a time. <laughs> In contrast to <clears throat> action verbs, we've got linking verbs. My goodness, how many verbs are there? Well, there's still quite a few more to discuss, as you warn you. <laughs> a linking verb, just think about a linking verb as equals, okay? Equals. Let's put a sentence out for you here. The drink tastes good, okay? Now, can you spot the linking verb in that sentence? It's tastes, isn't it? Equals. The drink is equal to good. The drink tastes good. The food tastes good. The dog's coat is furry. Okay, think about that. Think about them. Think about linking verbs as equal to the subject. Okay? Let's give you a list of some linking verbs. So what can a linking verb do? It can rename, it can link, sorry, it can link a noun that renames the subject. It can rename the adjective that renames the subject. The clue is basically in the title with linking verbs. That's what they do. They link. So, we've got linking verbs and we've got auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs making up verbal phrases. And linking verbs, like we discussed earlier, should be thought of as an equal sign. You know, it's equal to the subject. With verbs, you'll find that the definition can change in the context of different sentences. Auxiliary verbs can be main verbs. And under the list of auxiliary and linking verbs, you'll see the same verbs cropping up. What we're doing in this lesson is teaching you how to distinguish them how to distinguish the different categories that these verbs fall into. It's not learned overnight, okay? It does take a bit of studying and a bit of understanding. But what we're trying to do here now is make the whole subject about verbs a little bit less baffling. What we've got to understand now is, what I've got to uh, be reassured about is, have you understood what I've been talking about? Well, there's only one way to do that, I'm afraid, and that is to put you to the test. 
You've got 20 questions coming up asking you questions about what I have taught you here in today's video. So get your pen and your paper out or you can open up Notepad if you like and uh, on your computer or Microsoft Office. 20 questions, good luck with them. If you get 20 out of 20 I'll be very very impressed. If you don't get 20 out of 20 just go through the points I have raised in the video again. Now this is only the first part about learning verbs. There's another video to come. Okay, learning verbs part two. Then we're moving on to adverbs, adjectives, and we're going on to nouns, pronouns, all that kind of thing, spelling and oh, you name it. You name it, we'll be covering it. So good luck with the uh, quiz and I'll see you all later on.
Thank mm-hmm. you.